Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the fish room. Now, today we're gonna to be starting a new video series where I answer one of your questions every single day for the next month just to see if the YouTube algorithm likes it. And if you guys like these videos, I'll continue after 30 days, but I kinda of wanna see if what I'm reading online regarding frequency of uploading and engagement is going to affect the overall, I guess, um, what's the word I'm looking for? growth of the channel. So uh, yeah, so today's question comes from Chad. He says, my RODI system is using a lot of DI resin. What can I do to cut back on its consumption? Now, he goes on and later he says that uh, he lives just outside the city, but he's still using city water. It's about 200 TDS. And uh, of course we wanna get down to zero for our reef tanks. And he's just realizing that he's burning through a lot of DI resin and it's costing you know quite a bit of money. So uh, first thing first, Chad, you wanna monitor your system. And what I mean by that is you're gonna want TDS meters, not only for what's going into the system from your tap, uh, so that'd be a, your initial water going in. What I like to do here is I like to also have a monitor after the first three stages. So you have your sediment filter, your GAC filter, and I believe your carbon filter. Uh, after those three, I like to monitor what the TDS is going into the RO membrane, and of course, what's going out of the RO membrane into the DI, and then finally, what's coming out of the DI into my storage barrel. Now, the reason why I like to do this is because uh, at my old place, I had relatively high TDS. Uh, I was in the city technically, so I did have city water, and uh, it was pretty high. I don't know if it was 250. I, I don't remember, it's been so long. But either way, I would burn through that first sediment filter really quickly. I'd have to change that out every single month. And then, um, you know, the other filters, the GAC and the carbon, of course, would be depleted relatively quickly. So by monitoring what's going into that system, and then what's going out before it goes into the DI really gives you a good picture of how dirty those filters are getting and when they should be changed. So definitely monitor what's going in through all the stages. That way you know when you need to change your RO membrane. And that way, of course, you know when you need to change your DI if you're not using color changing. So uh, with that said, when it comes to your DI resin and what should be coming off of it before, or sorry, not your DI resin, but your RO membrane, what TDS should be coming off of that before it goes in your, into your uh, DI, I like to stay between five and 10 uh, TDS. Now, I've had upwards of 20 before and change it out, but you'll realize once you get above about 10 TDS coming off of your RO membrane, you really start burning up DI resin relatively quickly. So I recommend that you, uh, again, monitor everything and change the filters out as needed. Now, the, my second tip for you would be to get more DI resin. Now, if you've been here for a while, you know that I had the three stage. I still have the three stage, but I'm not using the Canteon, the Anion, and the mix bed. I think that's how you pronounce it. Right now, I just have three stages of BRS color changing DI resin. Uh, of course, it goes through the first one, uses it up. I like to swap it out at that point with the third chamber and to just kind of do a rotating and change out the DI as I go. And it really, going that route just allows me to have more DI resin and I don't have to change it out as quickly. So. Uh, those are my tips hopefully that helps out and if you guys like these types of videos feel free to give the video a thumbs up and um yeah if you want to if you want to ask your question you can either put it in the comment section or you can email me at fishofhex at gmail.com and uh, i'll see you guys tomorrow all right peace